everyone to another episode of Dope Data Operations AI and People. I'm Devavrit Shah, co founder and CTO of Ikikai Labs. I have been a professor at MIT since 2005, where I have been teaching machine learning and statistics. I'm a member of Institute for Data Systems and Society, IDSS, where I had distinct pleasure of being founding director of Statistics and Data Science Center, SDSC, within its umbrella. I'm thrilled to have my colleague, friend, and founding director of IDSS, Professor Munzer Dale, who is a visionary to say the least. IDSS was entirely his brainchild, and following him in this journey over the past decade has been uh, definitely one of the high points of my academic career. Munzer, thank you for being with us. Let me start by asking you, why did you found IDSS, and what is the vision and the mission of IDSS? Well, first of all, thanks, uh, David Rod, for the uh, nice introduction. It's definitely been an incredible journey, and it's been wonderful to have that with you and others who uh, are major contributors to building what we, what I think is a great success, the IDSS uh, program. So let me just say that uh, we launched IDSS almost now eight years ago with the idea of um, solving societal challenges in a rigorous and systematic way. When I talk about societal challenges, it often means challenges that have to do something with the society. Either the society is part of the challenge or the, the, the challenge is for the society. And you can think about a broad sense of things, you know, whether you're solving transportation problems or energy problems or market issues in terms of uh, investments and so forth. All of these things are for the society and about the society. And the key uh, distinguishing aspect of them is that they often involve the interaction between some physical entity, some physical system, protocols, computational capability, physical systems, and so forth, biology, mm -hmm. people, and institutions in terms of policy and uh, markets and what have you. And to solve, to address challenges of this kind of a societal challenge needs to bring all of these components together. And the only way we can bring these components together is to collect the data from all of these aspects. So big data became the common area, the common substrate that brought in all these different uh, components together in a non-trivial way. And the analysis of this type of heterogeneous, different time scale data, high dimensional data became a very important question in answering important questions about policy, important questions about intervention, and important questions about you know, behavior. Those became more you know, high dimensional, heterogeneous, time series statistical questions, mm -hmm. which meant for us that we have to develop that aspect in our institute. Hence the creation of uh, IDSS, entirely centered around data science. Thanks, Manzer. Over the years, I have been in the audience where you presented the seeds of the vision, the vision itself, uh, I've heard it, but every time I hear it, you know, I feel a refreshing, it's always very refreshing and I feel energized. As you might have noticed at some level, the name of this podcast is very much along the lines of IDSS, data operations, AI and people. Can you share your thoughts on the role of data within organizations and how modern organizations can try to utilize data a little better? Yeah, very much so. I think that organizations now, very differently from, I would say, 15, 20 years ago, they tra organizations track everything. They Not only things that are related to their business model in mm -hmm. terms of whatever they do, their sale or their uh, percentage in the market and, and mm -hmm. aspects of the business, but they track other things. They track the sentiment of workers. Mm -hmm. They try to understand the culture that they have. They understand their competition. Companies and organizations are constantly developing metrics mm -hmm. for evaluating whether they're doing something correctly or not. They're very interested in intervention and change and understanding the impact of the intervention and change. And so what is happening is at the top level, you cannot be a successful leader of an organization without having a good appreciation of what the data means mm -hmm. and a good appreciation of the capabilities that the data can give you and the interaction of your data to your business models and your systems. And then at the lower layers, people are working with the data all the time. Mm -hmm. And so at some level, 
data has become so intertwined with everything an organization does that education across layers mm -hmm. has to happen. And this is one of the things that we identify that IDS has, mm -hmm. is that we need to provide education, not only for the freshly graduated students who can actually take graduate level courses from us, but also for the senior executives who have been far away from computing and, and programming and mm -hmm. mathematics, but need to understand in a, in a precise way what data really means. And that education at all, across all levels have to be provided. So we think data and organizations have become an integral piece and education of the future leader and worker and so forth requires data science. That's great. So I think it brings me to the, my uh, next question educational institution, IMIT, and at the head of the institution on data science, which is IDSS, how do you think IDSS, MIT at large can help uh, play a role in educating these data operators effectively? That's a great question because I think, you know, when we think about data science, there are two pieces to it that is really important. One is the conceptual framework of processing data and drawing decisions. And mm -hmm. I call this field of decisions under uncertainty. It mm -hmm. really is about how do we make decisions with partial information. Data is partial information, it's not the full information. Okay. Yeah. And when the important aspect is when we do that, to do this correctly, mm -hmm. understand where we can make mistakes. A very uh, interesting example of uh, that was published in a medical journal that actually shows consumption of chocolate is related to winning a Nobel Prize. Okay. And the question we is... We should eat chocolates now. Yeah, I, mean, I think I love chocolate <laughs> and I'm just waiting for my prize. And the truth is that, of course, you know, there may be a correlation in this data, mm -hmm. but is this a causation? Does it make me smarter to eat more chocolate? And I think that, that those are the types of questions that we struggle with all the time. We can measure correlations between different aspects, but what caused what? is a much more complicated question. And often, not that trivial to answer just by looking at the data, but sometimes it is. And understanding when we can answer the question of causality mm -hmm. is an important aspect of understanding the conceptual piece of data. Another thing is the level of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. I can run a program, I can get an answer of a prediction, mm -hmm. but how good is this prediction? And how sensitive is this prediction to some assumptions that I've already made mm -hmm. about my processes and my system? This is a level of understanding at the decision-making mm -hmm. piece that's instrumental mm -hmm. for us not to make errors and not to make extrapolations that are incorrect. Then comes another piece of actually doing it. You know, you can't expect everybody to be an expert in Python and a, an amazing <laughs> programmer. Yeah. You really have to provide the platform that is easy to use for sophisticated computation. As we use our calculators to do sophisticated functions without thinking about them, I take a logarithm, but that's an infinite series, yes. you know, but I can compute a logarithm on my calculator. I need to be able to do a decision tree without having to be a major Python yeah. programmer. Mm -hmm. So we need to provide the platforms that are accessible, that don't require depth in code and so forth. And these two pieces, when they come together, I think we will actually allow the penetration of this technology into the minds and action of day-to-day -day activity across the board. And this is exactly what we're trying to do. It's fantastic. Well, folks, Again, I would like to thank Manzer for being with us. This has been a, a great conversation. I hope you all would enjoy it. Stay tuned for the next episode. Thank you. Thanks for uh, interviewing me.